Information tonight on the drowning of a local preschooler in a backyard pool last October. Many have questioned why the state attorney decided not to pursue any charges in the child's death since the pool was filthy and the city had an investigation of the property already underway. Ken is joining us with video of the grandmother's interview with police and the final report from investigators. Kent. What did prosecutors say about their decision not to charge the grandmother, Gail Cobb? Yeah, Tom and Stacy, the short answer we find in this report, prosecutor Alan Mizrahi and the detectives met, and the state attorney, the assistant state attorney, did not believe the case, quote, rises to the level that we would be able to charge and prosecute Ms. Cobb for negligence. The answer to why it doesn't rise to that level does not appear in the report or in the video of Cobb talking to police. I live in the United States. I live right here with you. But my law, to me, is different from you all's law. Gail Cobb spoke with detectives in November, about three weeks after her four-year-old granddaughter drowned in the pool at Cobb's home. The medical examiner ruled Alana Scott's drowning death accidental. The description of the pool and backyard raised concerns. Evidence technician reports a trampoline was near the pool with water so dense, quote, with algae and other contaminants that there was no visibility in the pool at all. The pool water was not only greenish black, but had other objects and unknown contaminants floating on top of the water. Water. A kid passed away mm -hmm. in the water. They said all kind of nasty things about me and stuff. That's not a normal thing. They don't know me. That that pool been there for 20, ever since I moved there in 93. My neighbors just all of a sudden going to be concerned that a pool is there. The day Alana Scott drowned, detectives say they tried to speak with Cobb, who was watching Alana and her 8-year-old sister at the time. They tried to talk to Cobb at the hospital where she was treated for an anxiety attack following the incident. Later, detectives asked Cobb to come unlock her home, which she did. They took a statement from her there, but they acknowledged her prior hospital visit and wrote in the report, Ms. Cobb appeared to be heavily medicated when I interviewed her. That's where detectives began when they asked Cobb questions in November, but most of her conversation focused on asking for another time to talk with police and explaining she doesn't trust law enforcement. She explained to me over the phone Monday some of what she told police, that she's still upset, still mourning the loss of her granddaughter on her watch. Uh, left things around the house, sitting there with that bicycle. But, so you want to go through this another day? I, I would think you just want to get, get it over with now and, and we're done. You never have to say to see Detective Scott nor I again. <laughs> but we have to document in our report what, what happened. So, so do you want to talk to me or not? Can we do this another day? I reached Gail Cobb on the phone today. She told me she's still very upset that she cries every time she thinks about what happened to her granddaughter. Stacy and Tom.